In early 2024, AMD announced their brand new series of Ryzen CPUs. These are the Ryzen 8000G series CPUs, which AMD claims has the world's most powerful built-in graphics. And as of right now, these CPUs are on the market ready for you to buy. So do they actually have the world's most powerful graphics? We're gonna dive into that in today's video. Howdy, my name is Timmy, here with Sirius Power PC, and before we get into this week's content, please go ahead and leave a like on this video, that helps boost our videos in the algorithm, and also hit that subscribe button with the notification bell on so that you be notified every single time we upload a brand new video. We're going to start uploading gaming content to this channel in addition to our weekly tech videos that we post on Saturday, so be sure to subscribe so that you know exactly when our brand new gaming videos come out. We're going to be playing all sorts of games. I will personally be playing some Dead by Daylight, as well as some FPV drone simulators, and we're hoping that sometime soon we can maybe even start streaming a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Now, at the start of the year, AMD announced some brand new CPUs. They announced four to be specific. They announced the AMD Ryzen 3 8300G, which is the lower end CPU. They announced two mid range GPUs, one being the Ryzen 5 8500G and also the Ryzen 5 8600G. And I'll get into a little bit more of what separates those CPUs uh, a little bit later. It's mainly just performance and price, but I'll get into, into it a bit more later. And then finally, we have the high end CPU for the lineup, which is the Ryzen 7 8000 700G. All of these CPUs are on the market ready for you to purchase right now. So without further ado, let's get into some of the specs of these CPUs with this handy dandy comprehensive graph. Starting with the AMD Ryzen 3 8300G, this CPU has four cores, eight threads, and a base clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz with a boost clock of up to 4.9 gigahertz. It has a 12 megabyte cache and 65 watts TDP, which is how much that CPU draws from your power supply, the wattage required to power the CPU. And the average MS, uh, MSRP, sorry, I can't talk today, is around 175 USD. So now let's take a look at the two mid-range CPUs. We'll start off with the lower end option, which is the AMD Ryzen 5 8500G. This CPU has six cores and 12 threads, which is two cores more, four threads more uh, than its predecessor. Math, I'm good at it, just kidding. Uh, it has a base clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz, which is a bit lower than the 8600G, which you will see in a minute. It also has a 12 megabyte cache, and would you know it, 65 watts TDP. That's a little weird. It's almost like we're going to see 65 a lot, foreshadowing. The current SRP, or standard retail price, for this CPU from AMD is $179, so it's barely more expensive than the 8300G, so keep that in mind when, if you're considering uh, getting any of these CPUs. Now, let's take a look at the second mid-range option, which is the higher end of the mid-range selection, which is the AMD Ryzen 5 8600G, not to be confused with the 8500G. Goodness, I love numbers. This CPU has six cores and 12 threads, just like the 8500G. However, it has a base frequency of 4.3 gigahertz and a boost frequency of five gigahertz. It has a 22 megabyte cache and would you guess, it also draws 65 watts of power, which is crazy considering the fact that the CPU has higher boot. It's, it's just crazy that they were able to keep the wattage at the exact same. So keep that in mind when, uh, when looking for your power supply, if you're looking to build a new PC and, uh, and the current standard retail price of this CPU that's provided by AMD is $229. Finally, let's take a look at the big boy. Let's take a look at the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G. This is the 
uh, highest CPU in the 8000G series, and this CPU in particular has 8 cores and 16 threads. It has a base frequency of 4.2 GHz and a boost frequency of 5.1 GHz, which is decently higher than any of the other CPUs in this lineup. It has a total of a 24 megabyte cache, and guess what the wattage drawn is? Can you take a guess, guys? It's 65 again! It's like they saw that Adam Driver movie about dinosaurs, and they were like, Dadgummit, that's a good number, we're gonna roll with that. Because yet again, the, the, the Ryzen 3 8300G and the Ryzen 7 8700G draw the same amount of power, which is bonkers. I love that. That's awesome because it means you're going to be able to save because you don't have to buy a 2000 watt power supply just to power your i9-14900K. It only takes 65 watts to, yes that was a dig at Intel by the way for having such high wattage CPUs. It only takes 65 watts to power the CPU. Obviously, if you boost it, you know, it will take more. And the standard retail price for this CPU is 329 smackaroonies. Now that we've kind of given you some initial specs for each of these CPUs, our next segment is going to specifically focus on the 8600G and the 8700G. Uh, we'll check the initial performance of these two CPUs when stacked up against a similar price range CPUs and graphics cards and we'll give you a little bit more uh, information about that and how this is going to affect your choice when uh, when buying your next CPU. The 8600G and the 8700G both run on the AM5 socket so future proofing baby let's go we made a video on that top right of the screen right now if you haven't seen it yet you should go watch it we go over some really really good and really timely information uh, about future proofing your PC and kind of explain what it is. Uh, both of these also support the DDR5 platform, which again, future proofing points, let's go baby. These processors also have an included CPU air cooler. So for the 8600G, you get an AMD Wraith Stealth CPU cooler. And for the 8700G, you get the AMD Wraith Spire CPU cooler. So saving you a little bit of money if you want to go with the air cooler as opposed to an AIO liquid cooler. Uh, in that instance. Now, AMD claims that these CPUs have onboard graphics that are on par with their mobile chip solutions. Uh, these mobile chips have been seen in things like the Asus ROG Ally and the Lenovo mobile handheld consoles that have been coming out recently. And they can play AAA games at 30 to 60 FPS on low settings, as AMD mentioned. So, that, that's pretty cool. When you take a look at the performance of the ROG Ally, while the battery life on the thing sucks, it is really, really impressive to think about the fact that 10 years ago, if you would have said, yeah, you can hold a PC in your hands and you can play AAA games that are optimized for PCs, yeah, you can play that on a handheld device. You would have blown people's minds. So to see technology like this and for AMD to be bragging that their technology uh, are you know, gaining popularity and are being seen in more and more solutions is cool. Good for AMD, or good on AMD, for uh, taking some of that sweet, sweet market share. <laughs> AMD also mentioned that the CPUs have superior game performance compared to a more expensive uh, processor and GPU combo at a similar range, and we're going to take a look at some statistics about that right now. So we're going to start off with the synthetic benchmark provided by Linus Tech Tips. If you compare a CPU plus GPU combo in the same price range, the Ryzen 8700G is performing much better than the Intel i5 combined with the 1650 Super. These AMD CPUs and GPUs outperform their Intel counterparts in both a Cinebench 2024 test as well as a Blender benchmark. For the gaming benchmarks that LTT provided, you can clearly see that the data for Cyberpunk 2077 is really, really good for 1080p low setting gameplay. However, AMD claims that they can reach 60 FPS, which in the marketing materials that AMD provided, they, they did not mention how they managed to push these CPUs to reach 
60 FPS, so real-world benchmarks will most likely vary depending on, you know, what system you're uh, putting the CPUs in that get them to run 60 FPS with just the CPU no graphics card. It's cool to see that, that CPUs are kind of advancing to where, who knows, there may reach a point in the future where when you're building your PC, you might not necessarily need an onboard graphics card, or at the very least, you won't need a horribly expensive onboard graphics card. That's just something kind of cool to think about that I've always found fascinating, considering uh, my first PC did not have any graphics card at all, and it was running an Intel i5 a uh, really, really old i5. <laughs> if you take a look at the specs in terms of gaming, uh, generally the Intel cores did outperform the AMD counterparts. However, obviously, your, your situation is going to vary based on exactly what type of graphics card and Intel core uh, you have. But just look at the data. Look at the data for Cyberpunk 2077. That's... That's really, really good for just a CPU. Like, literally just the Ryzen 7 8700G is performing, I wouldn't say toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but I mean, it's it's performing close to an i5 plus a graphics card. That's really, really impressive. Any way you look at it, to be just a CPU and doing almost as well, I say almost as well, it's like 15 frames behind, but I'm just saying, it's, it's looking like it might be a cost-effective option sometime in the next couple years. Overall, these CPUs are great, and we were really, really excited when AMD announced them, just because, yet again, that's cool that you're getting similar performance for very, very similar pricing that doesn't even have a graphics card included in it. That's just, that's crazy. That blew my mind when I actually, like, looked at some gameplay demonstrations, and I thought to myself, oh, that's just a CPU. That's no graphics card, and it's putting up those numbers. That's that's really impressive and really cool to me. But as we always say here at Serious Power PC, we recommend going for the CPUs that will get you the highest FPS per dollar that fits within your budget. You can always consider secondhand units, though you want to make sure that they are stress tested properly and that you're not about to, you know, buy a CPU that has every pin on the back bent. Also, if you ever want help optimizing or compiling a list of PC parts for your budget, we're here to help reach out to us over at SeriousPowerPC.com, or you could also leave a comment right here in the comment section down below. I'll try to respond to you as quickly as uh, possible. I guarantee I will respond to you in one to two uh, business years. So what's your opinion on AMD's newest CPUs? Are you excited for them? Do you think they're overhyped? Do you think that eventually CPUs are going to replace graphics cards altogether? Thank you so, so much for watching. If you're uh, still watching to this point, we absolutely love you. And if you don't mind, go ahead and leave a like. That way you're suggested more content like this. Not only does it help us, but it also helps you because you see more of our videos. And if you're on that train already, consider subscribing and hitting the bell because every Saturday we upload a video like this or even better. We're trying to make every single video better so that we can be providing you with absolutely phenomenal content and phenomenal information that you want to come back for every single Saturday. We're also going to be doing some gaming videos very, very soon, so go ahead and hit the bell if you're excited for that, and type in the comments down below, yet again, what kind of games do you want to see us play? I am open to playing almost anything. Be sure to reach out to us at SeriousPowerPC.com or in the comment section down below if you have any questions about building, optimizing, or just making your gaming PC absolutely perfect. My name is Timmy, here with Serious Power PC. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video.